Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by MacPaw, the maker of Clean My Mac X. Visit macpaw.com slash podcast to download your copy and use the code Mac Voices to save 5%. Mac Voices is supported by LinkedIn Jobs. Find the right person for your business today with LinkedIn Jobs. Pay what you want and get $50 off your first job post at linkedin.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're going to talk about WordPress today. Uh, in, in the current environment and going forward, your website is probably even more important than it was you know, before COVID-19, before much of anything. It's it just now more and more people are doing business from home online or researching things online or looking for you, whatever website you happen to have up. And there are a lot of great options out there for building your website. But WordPress is definitely the most, uh, it, 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 it's the one that has the biggest market share out there. And that, that provides a lot of opportunities. It also provides some potential problems. So we're going to talk all about that with Mr. Mike Potter. Mike, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here again. Hey, Chuck. Uh, it's good to see you too. And uh, when you asked me to come on and talk about this, it kind of took me aback at first. I'm used to coming on and talking about Max or talking about Max Doc. And, you know, hey, shill that I am, I'm wearing my Max Doc hat, of course, and my 2017 Max Doc t shirt, although I did stop short of a Max Doc mug. This is my Walt Disney World mug. So, um, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, it took me aback at first because. WordPress is one of those things that I, I use and I work with on a daily basis, but don't talk about it. You know, <laughs> it's just one of those things I don't talk about. So I, I have been thinking the past few days about some of the questions you asked me, which I'll let you get to in just a moment, um, and what my responses might be to those Well, good. Then, then that means there, there will be extra intelligent responses. <laughs> yeah well we hope i'll try my best <laughs> well honestly i knew that you you built wordpress sites for your clients i did not realize how much how much depth you went into uh and and i had a problem with my wordpress site which is mac voices the the website runs on wordpress and you were able to help me out right. and dig in and that was sort of the genesis of this discussion um, because right. I, I think there are a lot of us that would, and, and I admit when I got into it, I know software advances and I know that, you know, there, there are bug fixes and there are security updates and all those things. I don't think I realized though, that my WordPress site could break quite as effectively as it did. Um, and, you know, and, and as frustratingly as it did. Because yeah. something something in WordPress itself changed. I'm used to plugins going in and out, um, and we can sure. talk about the the plugin architecture. But and so it really brought home to me that this is something we should talk about because there are a lot of people out there that oh yeah the first answer and and it's a good answer but the first answer is WordPress, and yet you know you need to be a little aware of it. Yeah, well, you mentioned earlier that um, WordPress is one of the more widely used platforms out there. And it's true. Uh, it's been creeping up there each year. And I believe the current stat is that WordPress is the engine behind uh, roughly 35% of the websites out there right now. So that's a huge swath of the internet, a huge, uh, not the internet, a huge swath of the websites that <laughs> reside on the internet. You have to be careful with that. Um, and uh, it's important uh, when you're on a platform that's as widely used as that to stay on top of things like updates and patches and plugin changes and things like that. And um, it, it is something I run into, oh, not on a daily basis, but certainly on a week, weekly basis where I hear from somebody who um, uh, hasn't been maintaining their site, which was not the case for you, by the way. Um, but uh, someone who has hasn't been maintaining their site, and you know, when I log in and I take a look at things, I see that they're actually 
not just a single version behind, but multiple versions behind, uh, which is not only a functionality issue, but a security issue as well. It's much like applying patches to Mac OS when they come out or iOS when they come out. There are security issues that, that get taken care of, and it's important to stay on top of those things, which doesn't mean it's hard to manage. Uh, WordPress is actually very easy to manage, which is one of the reasons that I work uh, uh, so much with it with my clients. Um, <clears throat> but if it's not if it's not within your wheelhouse to manage it, or it's not within your desire to manage it, which is the case for most small businesses, they they want a website, they need a website, they need a place to interact or sell products to their their customers and clients, but they don't necessarily want to become web experts. So WordPress fills a nice little niche in there that uh, so many other platforms don't. And one of the things that I think is so seductive about WordPress in a very positive sense is the, is the plugin architecture that mm -hmm. you can, you can pretty much get it to do almost anything you want. If you find the right plugin or sets of plugins to add functionality right. to, to the base WordPress. So I know that's one reason that when I was looking around um, for something, I mean, Mac voices started out as a, as a hand coded kind of thing, right. uh, manually maintained. And I wanted something more modern back then. And WordPress was the logical choice because I could, I could probably, I got just, I could get everything I wanted and a whole lot more. A absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> I have been uh, hand coding websites going back to 95, 96, somewhere in there. You know, um, that's how websites were built. You fired up Notepad or the equivalent, and you just started typing away. And if something didn't work, you go back to the code. And it's, it reminds me a lot of uh, the old days of personal computers. When you wanted the computer to do something, very often you picked up a copy of uh, Compute Magazine or something that had all those listings in the back of it. And you sat there at your Apple II, and you typed all the code in, or in my case, your Sin Sinclair Spectrum, and you typed all the code in, and you hit Run, and then... The game you wanted to play, and this is a very um, this was an example that sticks in my head over and over because it was an incredibly frustrating example, was on my um, Sinclair ZX81. Um, th th it was an amazing program. It it gave it high resolution graphics, but it was a submarine chase game, and it was all assembly code. You had to sit there and type in these little two digit codes to to get the game to run and to get the high resolution graphics. And when it was all done, when you when you shot your missile at the submarine and hit it, the explosion showed up three quarters of the way across the screen. <laughs> and it was one two digit piece of assembly, Z80 assembly code that was mistyped in their listing. And to, to debug something like that when you're not the original coder is crazy. Well, Ultimately, I did fix that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and I wrote a letter to the magazine and said, here's the fix to your code. Uh, but then, you know, websites come along and the Internet comes along. And that's kind of how we built websites, too, is you you build them from scratch. Um, you you build it to do something that you want it to do. You're, you're hand coding. Um, well, actually, w way back then, I was doing a lot of active server pages, uh, which is uh, Microsoft's thing, doing a lot of ASP. Uh, later moved to PHP, but you're you're hand coding a lot of stuff, and when something goes wrong, you have to debug it all. Um, not that that doesn't happen now, but it's a lot easier when someone else is writing the plugin, and someone else is writing the theme, and someone else is writing the core engine that drives the website. Um, you, you're you're not necessarily, although you could be because it's all open source. You're not necessarily the one to sit there and debug it all. So it's a lot different way of building a website, but it's it it can be just as challenging. Well, WordPress is essentially, in in the grossest sense, I think, a content management system. It's not as sophisticated as a lot of them, but it it is a database driven front end or uh, the back the back end is database driven, and the front end makes it all look pretty. Which actually takes me to yeah. the second seductive part of WordPress for me, and for and I think for, again for everybody else, is that not only do you have the plugins to improve the functionality, or, or or add the functionality, but you have the themes. 
so that you can right. put whatever color shirt, pants, dress, tuxedo, <laughs> jeans on on it you want, and it'll look the way you want. So you you may be running a WordPress site. I'm running a WordPress site, and they look absolutely nothing like each other at all. And it and it's very easy. <clears throat> Sometimes when you've worked with WordPress for a while, it's easy to look at a site and say, "Oh, I think that's probably running WordPress." Um, but it's it's very easy to develop a site that that does not look at all like it's a WordPress driven site. Uh, to your point, and that's one of the 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 best features of WordPress, in my opinion, is that it's so easy, like you said, to personalize and scale it to your needs. Uh, when WordPress started out. It was actually a different open source project that was taken over uh, by Matt Mullenweg and uh, another person whose name is escaping me right at the moment. Um, but they took it over and it became WordPress in 2003, but it started out as a blogging platform. And because it started as a blogging platform, even to this day, there are many people who still consider WordPress just a blogging platform uh, and don't realize how extensible it is that not only can it make a great blog, which it can because the blogging functionality is and always has been built into it, but it can it can do something as simple as run a small business website. Uh, um, it can be an online store, a complete e-commerce solution, a very flexible e-commerce solution, by the way. Um, it's used for membership sites. Uh, one of my favorite uses are um, LMSs learning management systems, some fantastic solutions in there. I've, I've worked with one called LearnDash, which I think is a great LMS. Um, uh, directories, the local farmer's market in Woodstock, Illinois, uses WordPress as a, a, essentially a directory of their vendors in summer and winter. They have two different markets. Um, and of course, podcasts. Uh, so it's a very, very flexible system and it's, it's rare very rare to come up with an idea and not find an existing solution for it. There have been whole industries built around using WordPress for one particular purpose. Um, and e-commerce is a, a great example. The, the most widely used e-commerce plugin for WordPress is called WooCommerce. And it was so widely used and so popular that Automatic, the parent company of WordPress, actually bought it and uh, now has, uh, you know, they oversee that project as well. So, um, yeah, it's an incredibly flexible platform. Uh, theming aside, which is a, a great way to personalize it, um, like I said, scalability is just, is just huge with WordPress. Uh, and that's one of the big selling points to my clients. When I decided that I wanted to um, you almost have to focus on a single platform, <laughs> no matter no matter what it is these days. You almost have to because of of everything that's out there and everything you can do with the different platforms. You almost have to decide to just focus on one. And whether it's an open source uh, uh, CMS like Drupal or Joomla or WordPress, focusing on one allows you to more quickly come up with the answers that uh, a client might need when you're trying to. Uh, come up with a solution for them. Um, so when I talk to clients about it, one of the big selling points of WordPress is not how widely it's used or how great we can personalize it and all that kind of stuff. It's that scalability. It's the fact that they don't have to start huge. They can start with a simple site, what, what um, can sometimes derisively be called a brochureware, but it's the information that people need to know about their business when they come to the website. And then you can add interaction on top of that. You can add contact forms, quotation forms. You can add um, simple forms to pay invoices on the site. And then uh, when they're ready to move on, it doesn't have to be now. It doesn't have to be next year. It might be three years from now. They can take that exact same WordPress site, reskin it, retheme it if they want to. Uh, but they can also add that e-commerce functionality when they're ready to, or they can add a learning management system when they're ready to, or they can add a directory or any of these things that we talked about and just bolt it onto the system that's already there. And that's what's so amazing about it. It's it's modular and and extensible to that effect. And, and it's a huge selling point. 
And you don't get that with a lot of the um, web builder type sites. So to go back to the, the very beginning when, when I said what I did, one of the reasons I wanted to have this discussion, because I know I'm going to get an email, somebody saying, well, but why are you talking about this? Because it's not Apple or Mac. And I've, right. I've become just so very aware since the lockdown started of businesses that have really suffered because they didn't have a web presence or their web presence was so questionable. And in a couple of cases, I've watched them kind of bolt things together and try to get them up and running and, and, and notably restaurants. Um, who maybe mm -hmm. didn't have yeah. any web presence at all, and they wanted to get into the takeout business, and so they they kind of suddenly all they came up with a website, and then they they um, they found somebody that would accept credit cards for them. So you know they bolted that in, and then an ordering system they bolted that on, and you know look it worked, but it also you know is a Rube Goldberg kind of thing, and right. I feel like you know if you're going to do it now. As lockdown starts to end for some of us, now's a good time for you to step back and find somebody to help you develop it. And Mike, to your point, which I thought was a great one, you know, small businesses, they don't want to become web experts, even with right. something like WordPress. You know, they need to hire somebody to do it. And then a, a, a few, I guess it's been a couple months ago now, Adam Angst and I were talking and even Adam said, you know, that, yeah, he can write HTML, he has HTML, but he would never do anything without having someone that specializes in web development. So I think we're beyond, unless you just are really going to be happy with a brochure where site, like you said, you really need to find somebody you can trust and that, that knows whatever system you decide you want to use as if you are a web expert and know which system you want to use. You know, you, you just, you need to find a reliable website developer. Yeah, or someone you can, I, I like to refer to it as someone you can partner with. Uh, because for so many small businesses, it's exactly that. It's a partnership. It's not something that they want to, I'll often say, look, when, when all is said and done, if you want me to hand you the keys to your website, I will hand you the keys to your website and it's completely yours to run. And and there have been a couple of clients who wanted to do that, and that's great because uh, they have that desire to learn and and uh, learn something different, I should say. That everybody who has a small business wants to learn, desire to learn um, something different than what they do on a day to day basis, and maybe in their case, uh, managing a website is that thing. You know, it's it it not a not a hobby, but it's something something new to expand their horizons, if you will. Uh, and, and for a couple of folks, that's exactly what they've done and they do a very good job of it. Um, but uh, yes, I'm always happy to hand over the keys, but I'm also ready and willing to lend them a hand when they have something that they need updated or when they have um, a, a new direction they wanna take the site or a simple theming change. I, you know, that's, that's what I'm there to help them with. Um, so, from that perspective, I, I view it as a partnership. Um, but how does that relate to Apple and Mac, Chuck? I think well, one of the one of the things uh, you know is is management of it, and there certainly are apps that you can download for the Mac, and there is an app from WordPress itself for iOS that allow you to manage and maintain your site, um, e even in in my opinion, in a more basic way. Uh, but if your primary uh, focus with your site is to um, create a new blog post every week, put out information for your clients, uh, update a page with content that's important to uh, people who buy products from your stores, things like that, you can do all that from your iPhone or your iPad if you need or want to. Uh, you don't have to do it from a Mac or you don't have to do it from a computer and, and you, don't, you certainly don't have to do it with a web browser. You can use the app that WordPress has developed and made available to you. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by MacPaw, the makers of Clean My Mac X. Want your Mac to run leaner, meaner, and cleaner? Of course you do. The first step, and it's a big step in that direction, is to use Clean My Mac X. With a history of more than 10 years of helping Mac users get more out of their machines, Clean My Mac X is a simple to understand, simple to use utility. By its name, you might think of it as a cleaning utility, but it's so much more. 
It deep scans your Mac for temporary files and application leftovers that hide in the corners of your Mac where you might not think or even be able to look. It then tells you about them to make sure that you know what you're getting rid of so there are no surprises or mistakes. Want more? Clean My Mac maps out your storage space, showing you what is stored where and what is taking up the most space to help you manage it. There's a lot more, but that'll get you started. Visit macpaw.com slash podcast to download Clean My Mac X today and use the coupon code MACVOICES to receive 5% off. Upon visiting macpaw.com slash podcast, click the Buy Now button, then scroll to the bottom of your screen to enter the code before completing your purchase. Clean My Mac X is also now available in the Apple App Store. Again, macpaw.com slash podcast to download a demo version of Clean My Mac X today and use the coupon code MACVOICES to receive 5% off. Thanks to MacPaw and Clean My Mac X for supporting this edition of Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by LinkedIn Jobs. When it comes to social networks, there's plenty of controversy. Should you be on one and not the other? Both? What about this one? What about that one? The one place that is immune to those debates is LinkedIn. If you are in business, then you're on LinkedIn, or you should be. More and more business is getting done on LinkedIn than ever before, thanks to both changing attitudes about online connections, as well as the limitations imposed by COVID-19. And that's exactly why you want to be looking at LinkedIn jobs when it comes time to add to your organization. LinkedIn has over 675 million members. Think about that. Over 675 million members. That's an incredible pool of talent to choose from. And LinkedIn Jobs helps narrow the search to put your jobs in front of the people with the right skill set. And now LinkedIn Jobs is trying to help all of us by supporting the healthcare community. To post a healthcare or essential service job for free, or if you're in another industry and have hiring needs, visit linkedin.com slash macvoices. linkedin.com slash macvoices. Terms and conditions apply. That's linkedin.com slash macvoices to post a healthcare or essential service job for free. Thanks to LinkedIn Jobs for their support of Mac Voices. But you just, again, you said something interesting there that folks need to understand, that if if your site is built right with the right, right tools and with that much training, you can do a lot of the work, not the maintenance, but the work yeah. of adding content. Um, and not just a blog post, but men, you know, if you're a restaurant, menu additions, or if you are a business that has a sale on a weekly basis, you know, you can it can be built so that you can put the sale items in, so that you don't have to call your web developer right. or whatever. And right. and that that too is is a big appealing part of it. But at some point, you're going to want to have somebody that can do the maintenance on it. Um, I, hey, I've had the Mac Voices website hacked. Um, and, you know, long ago, and I went to um, one of the security companies and had to pay to a have it cleaned up. And now I pay to have it monitored just because mm -hmm. because it's such a, a popular platform. There are people out there all the time. They're not necessarily picking on Mac Voices, the site. They're picking on WordPress, the platform, and sending out all, you know, millions of little bots running around the Internet trying to find those holes that they can crawl into and cause trouble. Yeah, when when you look at the logs from a, a security plugin, uh, and there's two very popular, or there's many many popular ones. But the one I use is called WordFence. I think is an excellent um, uh, security plugin for WordPress. Uh, but then there's also Security, um, and also an excellent security plugin. But there's a myriad other security plugins out there. Some good, some some um, you know adequate. Um, but when you look at the logs from them, uh, anyone who doesn't understand how frequently a website, not a WordPress website, a website of any sort is attacked on a daily basis, probably doesn't want to look at those logs. <laughs> yeah, it's it it's staggering. I mean, because. Again, it's it's not an individual sitting somewhere in a basement, you know, hacking away at your domain. It's you know right. the, the bots and the automated attacks that are out there that they're they just go look for places, and it could be could be your site, could be the restaurant site down the street, or it could be my site, but they're they're looking at those and and hundreds of thousands of others in the space of what ten minutes, fifteen minutes, maybe 
maybe a little more, a little more, a little less. If so, that, yeah, yeah, if that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but, you know, getting a, you, anything can be attacked. Anything can be um, anything. The Mac, I mean, you certainly don't want to look at how many times your router's firewall is being hit in a daily basis. Uh, if if you like to shield yourself from the dangers of the Internet, don't look at those logs. Um, but everything is under attack. So, the you know, the, the fact of the matter when it comes right down to it is WordPress is a secure platform. Um, uh, that's one of the things too, you often hear, you'll hear this about windows. You hear it about the Mac. It's like, oh, there's a security problem for the Mac. Oh, there's a security problem for windows at the core. Mac OS and windows are, are secure systems. And they have some, some very intelligent people looking after them, making sure that when a, a security vulnerability is discovered, that it's patched and that patch is released to the end users. Um, and the same is true with WordPress and it's even, uh, more so with WordPress because it's an open source piece of code. Um, and that means that one of the, one of the things that, um, let's see, WordPress is published with a GPL license, uh, which is the general public license. And one of the things that gives you as an end user the right to do is to examine the code and see how it works. And one of the nice things about open source software in general, uh, whether it's Firefox or LibreOffice or what, you know what ha or WordPress, is having all these eyes on the software means that security vulnerabilities are discovered and they're, they're discovered quickly. They're reported back to the, the core team. Patches are put into effect and those patches are rolled out and they're rolled out very, very quickly. Uh, WordPress will automatically update itself on point releases, not major releases, but point releases. It will automatically update itself. And when there's a security vulnerability, um, one of my roles is to go around and make sure that all my client sites are patched against it. And uh, when there is a security vulnerability, sometimes I'm taken aback at how quickly WordPress is automatically rolling out these updates and getting them onto the sites that need them not only on the current version of WordPress, but on multiple previous versions of it as well. They make sure they go back in the code and patch that vulnerability on, on previous versions too. So it's a secure platform. But now we're talking about the development team behind WordPress. So you also have to look at the plugins that you use and the themes that you use and make sure that you're working with responsible individuals there as well to ensure that when there's a security vulnerability discovered in their plugin, that that's patched and a patch is rolled out in a timely manner. And it's not quite literally some guy sitting in his basement who just had an idea for a plugin and threw it out there on the repository and you're using it and maybe, you know, 900,000 other people are using it, but he doesn't care. And that's a problem. So when these vulnerabilities are discovered, and there are companies, WordFence is, is one of them, and there are others as well, including WordPress, go through the, the repository of plugins and themes and discover something, and they, they come across a non-responsive developer, they yank that plugin, and word gets out very quickly, um, especially through the security plugins, that you may be using something that's no longer developed, it may have a security problem, or if it does have a security problem, they alert you to it, and you can take action and either replace it or or pull it from your site. Um, so it's it's a it's a secure platform, and the vulnerabilities that are often discovered with it are not discovered with WordPress. Although there are, there was just a security patch for it. Again, rolled out very quickly. Um, but the big security vulnerabilities are often with the plugins, these third party plugins from developers that maybe aren't professionals and um, put something out there and then don't give it the attention that it it needs. And, and you know, there are people are using it. So many things I want to get to here, but I, if you would explain just a little bit why having WordPress as an open source platform is a good thing both uh, mainly from a security standpoint, since that's sort of where we are right now, but, um, but in general as well. Well, I mean, I can, I can quote the, the GPL, um, 
well, not not verbatim, <laughs> but I can I can roughly approximately quote the GPL. Um, there there are several several reasons why you might put a, a in this particular case a GPL license on it. Um, the first is it it gives people who download the code the right to run that code for any purpose. There are no restrictions on how when or why I can use the WordPress code. It's up to me how I'm going to use it. That's my right under the GPL. Um, it gives me the right to examine that code and then to make changes to that code and then to use those changes in the way that I want or need to use those changes. So that's, that's part of the reason it's good that it's open source. It gives me the right to redistribute the code. I can redistribute the WordPress code to anyone I want to. Um, and then uh, lastly, I can distribute modified versions of that code. And there are instances of forked versions of WordPress and WooCommerce and other uh, GPL um, plugins and themes and things like that for WordPress. There are forked versions of them out there because the GPL gives people the right to not only modify that code, but then to distribute those modifications, as long as they distribute it also under GPL licensing. So there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, it you know, you might come across um, a plugin that's incredibly valuable, incredibly um, useful, but is no longer being developed. And because it's GPL, you can, if you have the chops, modify the code yourself, or you can hire someone to modify the code, and then you can distribute that code as a new edition of that plugin or an entirely new plugin. Um, but you have the right to do that. Um, it may be controversial at times uh, when people take the code and they fork it and they release it as their own. And people say, well, well you know, why aren't you giving it? Well, you have credit. You know, you have the credit for that. You, 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 you got the credit in, in that I can take your code and I can modify it and I can release it as my own and I have to say in there that I'm I'm doing that I think you have to say you're doing that I might get that wrong um, but I think you have to say that you you know you're basing this on someone else's code um, but I, it, it, at its core um, the GPL gives me the right to do that so uh, if if you're lucky you'll find a flaw um, or someone will find a flaw and they'll report it back to the original developer and the original developer will make that change. Or maybe they'll have um, a, a spot on GitHub or some other place like that where you can submit that change and allow them to incorporate it into the core plugin or core code of, you know, WordPress core is what they call it. Um, maybe they'll they'll incorporate your changes into it. Same thing with the Linux kernel or same thing with any other open source project. If you find that or you you create an enhancement, maybe it's not a bug. Maybe you you come up with a way to enhance the code. I'm not a coder. I wish I were. I could maybe speak a little more intelligently about this. Or I should say I'm not really a coder anymore. Um, but you know, maybe you come up with an enhancement that would be useful to folks out there. You can submit that enhancement to the core team and they can opt to accept it or not accept it. If they decide they don't want to accept it, but you still feel it's value, valuable, you can release it on your own. And I, I just think that's incredibly valuable, not only to uh, WordPress and maintaining um, the, uh, or enhancing the functionality or security of WordPress, but also it's good for the community to, have that kind of feedback and have that kind of ongoing development that you might not get in a closed source world. That wraps up the first in our series of discussions with Mike Potter about WordPress and why it is a great choice for you and your website. As we go through the series, we talk about the things that are probably familiar to you and that you as a user might interact with, like themes and plugins. We also dig a little bit into the back end and explain why, if you want a sophisticated website, you probably want to go with someone like Mike to help you build it or build it for you. That's all coming up as we move through this series. Part two is coming up next. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices, and we'll see you next time. 
Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.